Gorillas Gorillas are a British virtual band created in 1998 by musician Damon Albarn and artist Jamie Hewlett. The band primarily consists of four animated members colon 2D, lead vocals, keyboards, melodica, Murdoch Nichols, bass guitar, noodle, guitars, occasionally keyboards and vocals, and Russell Hobbs, drums and percussion. Their fictional universe is explored through music videos, interviews, and other short cartoons. In reality, Albarn is the only permanent musical contributor, and often collaborates with other musicians. With Gorillaz, Albarn departed from the distinct Britpop of his band Blur and explored influences including hip-hop, electronic music, and world music through an eccentrically postmodern approach. The band's 2001 debut album Gorillaz went triple platinum in the UK and double platinum in Europe and earned its group an entry in the Guinness Book of World Records as the most successful virtual band. It was nominated for the Mercury Prize, but the nomination was withdrawn at the band's request. Their second studio album, Demon Days, 2005, went six times platinum in the UK and double platinum in the US. The band has won other awards, including one Grammy Award, two MTV Video Music Awards, an NME Award and three MTV Europe Music Awards. The third Gorillaz studio album, Plastic Beach, was released on March 3, 2010. The fourth, The Fall, was released on December 25, 2010 as a surprise gift for Pang fan club members, then on April 18, 2011 as an official release. The fifth, Humans, was released after a five-year hiatus on April 28, 2017. Their sixth studio album, The Now Now, was released on June 29, 2018. Gorillaz have been nominated for 10 Brit Awards, and won Best British Group at the 2018 Brit Awards. Musician Damon Albarn and comic creator Jamie Hewlett met in 1990 when guitarist Graham Coxon, a fan of Hewlett's work, asked him to interview Blur, a band Albarn and Coxon had recently formed. The interview was published in Deadline magazine, home of Hewlett's comic strip Tank Girl. Hewlett initially thought Albarn was assy, a wanker, despite becoming acquaintances with the band, they often did not get on, especially after Hewlett began seeing Coxon's ex-girlfriend Jane Oliver. Despite this, Albarn and Hewlett started sharing a flat on Westbourne Grove in London in 1997. Hewlett had recently broken up with Oliver and Albarn was at the end of his highly publicized relationship with Justine Frischman of Elastica. The idea to create Gorillaz came about when Albarn and Hewlett were watching MTV. Hewlett said, If you watch MTV for too long, it's a bit like hell, there's nothing of substance there. So we got this idea for a virtual band, something that would be a comment on that. The band originally identified theme self as his gorilla and the first song they recorded was Ghost Train, which was later released as a B-side on their single Rock the House and the B-side compilation G-Sides. The musicians behind Gorilla's first incarnation included Albarn Delaware the Funky Homo Sapien, Dan the Automator and Kid Koala, who had previously worked together on the track Time Keeps on Slipping for Deltron 3030's eponymous debut album. Although not released under the Gorilla's name, Albarn has said that one of the first ever Gorillaz tunes was Blur's 1997 single On Your Own, which was released for their fifth studio album Blur. The band's first release was the EP Tomorrow Comes Today, released on November 27, 2000. The band's first single was Clint Eastwood and was released on March 5, 2001. It was produced by hip-hop producer Dan the Automator and originally featured UK rap group Fi Life Cypher but the version that appears in the album features American rapper Del the Funky Homo Sapien, known on the album as Del the Ghost Rapper, a spirit in the band's drummer Russell Hobbs. The Fi Life Cypher version of Clint Eastwood appears on the B-side album G-Sides. Later that same month, their first full-length album, the self-titled Gorillaz, was released, producing four singles, Clint Eastwood, 19-2000, Rock the House, and Tomorrow Comes Today. In June 2001, 19 to 2000 a remix of the song was used as the title theme for EA Sports FIFA video game FIFA Football 2002. On 7th of December, the song 911 was released, a collaboration between Gorillaz and hip-hop group D12, without Eminem, and Terry Hall about the September 11 attacks. Meanwhile, G-Sides, a compilation of the B-Sides from the Tomorrow Comes Today EP and first three singles, was released in Japan on 12th of December. Gorillaz performed at the 2002 Brit Awards in London on 22nd of February, appearing in 3D animation on four large screens along with rap accompaniment by Fi Life Cypher. The band were nominated for four Brit Awards, including Best British Group, 
Best British Album, and British Breakthrough Act, but did not win any awards. On July 1, 2002, a remix album titled Like a Come Home by Space Monkeys vs. Gorillaz was released. It contains most of the songs from the Gorillaz first album, Gorillaz, but remixed in dub and reggae style. On 18th of November, a DVD titled was released. The DVD contains four promotional videos, the abandoned video for Five Fourths, the Charts of Darkness documentary, the Five Gorilla Bites, comedic shorts starring the virtual characters, a tour of the website by the Mel 9000 server and more. The DVD's menu was designed much like the band's website and depicts an abandoned Kong Studios. Rumors were circulating at this time that the Gorillaz team were busy preparing a film, but Hewlett said that the film project had been abandoned, we lost all interest in doing it as soon as we started meeting with studios and talking to these Hollywood executive types, we just weren't on the same page. We said, fuck it, we'll sit on the idea until we can do it ourselves, and maybe even raise the money ourselves. On December 8, 2004, the band's website reopened with a video entitled Rocket. The album Demon Days was released on May 11, 2005. The album debuted at number one on the UK Albums Chart. The third single was Dirty Harry, which had been released as a promotional single earlier that year. It was released in the United Kingdom on 21st of November. The fourth and final single was the double A side, Kids with Guns, El Manana. It was released in the UK on April 10, 2006. In December 2005, Demon Days had sold over a million copies in the UK making it the UK's fifth best-selling album of 2005. Demon Days has since gone six times platinum in the UK, double platinum in the United States, triple platinum in Australia and has sold over 8 million copies worldwide. At the 2005 MTV Video Music Awards in Miami on 28th of August, Gorillaz won two awards for Feel Good, Inc. Featuring De La Soul including the award for Breakthrough Video. Gorillaz performed Dirty Harry at the 2006 Brit Awards in London, and the band were nominated for Best British Group, and Best British Album, Demon Days. Plans were unveiled for Gorillaz to go on a holographic world tour in 2007 and 2008. The virtual members would be shown as virtual characters on stage using Musion Eyeliner technology, giving them a lifelike appearance on stage. The virtual characters were first used at the 2005 MTV Europe Music Awards in 3rd of November, and again at the 2006 Grammy Awards, on February 8, 2006 with the addition of Madonna, where the band played a pre-recorded version of Feel Good, Inc. During 16th October to 2nd November, a set of Gorillaz figures were released by Kid Robot to coincide with the release of Demon Days. Two variations of the set were released, known as the Red and Black Editions, and a limited edition noodle from the music video for Dare was also released. Three new sets of Gorillaz vinyl figures were released in 2006. The basic set, which was limited to 60,000, was the two tone set limited to 1,000, and the white edition, which was limited to 4,000, were released. On 26th of October, the Gorillaz autobiography titled Rise of the Ogre by Riverhead Books was released on UK. November 2, 2006 on US. On 30th of October, the DVD was released on UK. 25th of October in Japan. 31st of October in the US. And 11th of November in Australia. It contains the most of the materials released by Gorillaz from 2004 to 2006. The MTV Emmas, Grammys and Brits live performances. Also included is the Gorillaz MTV Cribs episode, The Phase 2 Gorillaz Bites, a new Kong Studios guide, a gallery, and short interviews. On June 2, 2006 the hopes for a Gorillaz film were revived, when Hewlett stated that they would be producing the film on their own. Film producer and the Weinstein Company co-chairman, Harvey Weinstein, was said to be in talks with Albarn and Hewlett. In a September 2006 interview with Uncut Magazine, Albarn was said that the band has been a fantastic journey which isn't over, because we're making a film. We've got Terry Gilliam involved. But as far as being in a big band and putting pop music out there, it's finished. We won't be doing that anymore. On November 19, 2007, a compilation album titled D Sides was released. It contains B sides and remixes from singles and bonus tracks for the band's second studio album Demon Days, as well as previously unreleased tracks recorded during the same sessions. On April 20, 2009, a documentary titled Bananas was released on PAL. Region Zero DVD format. It contains the documentary film, directed by Carrie Levy, 
documents the previous seven years of the band. The film was released online on the Babelgum website on April 20, 2009, followed by the DVD release on June 1, 2009. In late 2007, Albarn and Hewlett began working on Carousel, a new Gorillaz project which eventually evolved into the band's third studio album Plastic Beach. Albarn said I'm making this the biggest and most pop record I've ever made in many ways, but with all my experience to try and at least present something that has got depth. The album features guest performances by Snoop Dogg, Lou Reed, Mos Def, Bobby Womack, Gruff Reese, Mark E. Smith, Mick Jones, Paul Simonon, Kano, Bashi, De La Soul, Little Dragon, Hypnotic Brass Ensemble, Symphony of IVA, and the Lebanese National Orchestra for Oriental Arabic Music. On January 18, 2010, it was announced that Gorillaz would be headlining the final night of the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival on April 18, 2010. The first single from the album, Stylo, featuring Bobby Womack and Most Def was made available for download January 26, 2010. In October 2010, Al Barn announced to the media that he would not let the cast of Glee cover the band's songs, claiming that the music on the Fox Network's show was a very poor substitute for the real thing. This statement led most people to believe that Gorillaz had been asked by Glee producers to lend their music to the show, which they had not. Albarn responded to the confusion with a laugh and said and now they definitely won't. On October 5, 2010, Gorillaz announced their new single Donkomatic featuring Daily. On December 8, 2010, Albarn confirmed that a Gorillaz album recorded on the American leg of the Escape to Plastic Beach tour would be released to download for free exclusively to paying fan club members from the Gorillaz website on Christmas Day, December 25, 2010. The video for Phoner to Arizona was released on Gorillaz website for free on 24 December, and a day later, their new album was released, entitled The Fall. On April 18, 2011, Gorillaz announced the release of their own version of the iPad app by Electribe, by Korg, which features loops and samples taken from the fall as well as other samples. The new version features a Gorillaz designed and styled interface, and is customized to generate Gorillaz samples from their album The Fall and includes 128 new sounds created by the band and 64 ready to use pre programmed patterns from Gorillaz, Stephen Sedgwick, Gorillaz Engineer, and Korg. The app was based on Korg's Electribe, our device app. On October 5, 2011, Gorillaz released their first Greatest Hits compilation, The Singles Collection 2001-2011. On February 9, 2012, Gorillaz announced Do Thing, a single to promote the Gorillaz branded Converse shoes that were soon to be released. The song would be part of Converse's three artists, one song projects, with the two collaborators being James Murphy of LCD Sound System and Andre 3000 of Upcast. An explicit 13-minute long version of the song became available for listening shortly after on Gorillaz.com. Hewlett returned to direct the single's music video, featuring animated versions of the two collaborators on the track. In April 2012, Al Barn told The Guardian that he and Hewlett had fallen out and that future Gorillaz projects were unlikely. Tension between the two had been building, partly due to a belief held by Hewlett that his contributions to Gorillaz were being diminished. Speaking to The Guardian in April 2017, Hewlett explained, Damon had half the clash on stage, and Bobby Womack and Most F and De La Soul, and fucking Hypnotic Brass Ensemble and Bashi and everyone else. It was the greatest band ever. And the screen on stage behind them seemed to get smaller every day. I'd say, have we got a new screen? And the tour manager was like, no, it's the same screen. Because it seemed to me like it was getting smaller. On April 25, 2012, in an interview with Metro, Albarn was more optimistic about Gorilla's future, saying that once he had worked out his differences with Hewlett, he was sure that they would make another record. On June 24, 2013, Hewlett stated that he and Albarn planned to someday record a follow-up to their 2010 album Plastic Beach. In April 2014, Albarn told the National Post that he wouldn't mind having another stab at a Gorilla's record. Two months later he reported that he had been writing quite a lot of songs on the road for Gorilla's. On October 19, 2014, Al Barn told the Sydney Morning Herald that he was planning to release new Gorillaz material in 2016. Al Barn has described the music that he has written for the next Gorillaz album as being very upbeat, humorous, and positive, stating that he plans on giving the tracks a benchmark of 125 BPM and nothing underneath that, while also suggesting that it once again may have many collaborations. On July 16, 2015, 
Albarn stated during an interview for ABC 7.30 in Australia that he would begin work on the next Gorillaz album, I'm starting recording in September for a new Gorillaz record, I've just been really, really busy so I haven't had a chance. I'd love to just get back into that routine of being at home and coming to the studio five days a week. Speaking about his relationship with Hewlett, Albarn said that the pair's well-publicized fallout has helped their relationship in the long term. In October 2015, Albarn revealed to Rolling Stone that he and Hewlett were working on a new Gorillaz album. In April 2016, Hewlett uploaded two video clips onto his Instagram showing the continued work on the album. The first clip featured Liam Bailey and rumored executive producer on the album The Twilight Tone. The second clip was a time-lapse video featuring Albarn, Bailey, The Twilight Tone, and Jean-Michel Ujard. On May 17, 2016, Gorillaz were in the studio with Chicago-based hip-hop artist Vic Mensa. On September 20, 2016, Gorillaz began an abridged retrospective timeline of the history of Gorillaz releases since 2000. On October 3, 2016, Gorillaz began posting a series of interactive multimedia stories revolving around the fictional lives of each Gorillaz character since their hiatus to their social media profiles, beginning with the Book of Noodle, she ended up in Japan and tracked down a demon crime boss, then the Book of Russell, he was still a giant from the storyline of Plastic Beach, where he washed up on the shores of North Korea and starved so much he shrank back to normal size, then the Book of Murdoch. He was captured by the band's record label Parlophone at sea and told to make another album, and finishing with the Book of 2D, he was swallowed by a whale named Massive Dick on Plastic Beach, and washed up on the shores of Mexico, where to survive he had to eat the whale's blubber, but it turned out he was just at an empty part of Cabo San Lucas. On October 8, 2016, Noodle was given her own Instagram page and was announced to be the global ambassador of Jaguar Racing. On January 19, 2017, a new song from the band entitled Hallelujah Money featuring Benjamin Clementine was released. On 6 March, Gorillaz announced the launch of their own festival, called Demon Days Festival, which took place on June 10, 2017 at Dreamland Margate in Margate, Kent, England. The band headlined the festival. On March 17, 2017, the tracklist of the forthcoming album was leaked online, showing guest features from a variety of artists including usual collaborators De La Soul as well as new collaborators such as Grace Jones, Vince Staples, Pusha T, Rag and Bone Man, Anthony Hamilton, Kilo Kish, and Kali Uchis. On March 23, 2017, Gorillaz announced via Instagram that the new album will be entitled Humans, with a scheduled release date of April 28, 2017. On the official Gorillaz YouTube page, two new music videos were released for their track Saturn's Bars one of which was in a 360 degrees view. The track features vocals from Jamaican dance hall artist Popcon. The band also released an art video for the track Andromeda, featuring an animated planet in a galaxy. The track features the American rapper DRAM. Two more art videos were released, Ascension, featuring American rapper Vince Staples, and We Got the Power, featuring Jenny Beth of the English rock band Savages and Noel Gallagher of Oasis. On April 6, 2017, the fifth single from Humans, Let Me Out, featuring Mavis Staples and Pusha T, was released, followed by a performance of the song on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert on 27th of April. On April 10, 2017, a Gorillaz themed augmented reality app created in collaboration with Electronic Beats was released. On April 24, 2017, four days before the Humans release date, another promotional single was uploaded, titled The Apprentice. It is the only new song taken from the deluxe edition of Humans. On April 28, 2017, Humans was released worldwide. On June 8, 2017, the non-album single Sleeping Powder was released, along with an accompanying music video. On June 10, 2017, the band headlined the Demon Days Festival in Margate, England. On August 4, 2017, the band released Strobe Light as a single with an accompanying music video. On October 31, 2017, Garage Palace was released as a single from the Super Deluxe Edition of Humans, which includes 14 additional songs and was released on November 3, 2017. In December 2017, the band released a Humans-themed, in-universe magazine called G Magazine. On February 21, 2018, the band received the Brit Award for British Group for their work on Humans. During their acceptance speech, a short video of Murdoch was played, showing him being imprisoned for an unknown reason. In an interview with Q Magazine in September 2017, 
Albarn hinted at another potential Gorillaz album being in production. He mentioned enjoying the spontaneity of recording and debuting music while on tour, similarly to the band's 2010 release The Fall, but expressed desire to make it a comparatively more complete record, adding that if we're going to do more with Gorillaz, we don't want to wait seven years because, you know, we're getting on a bit now. At the end of the same month on September 30, 2017, while touring for Humans, the band debuted a new song in Seattle called Idaho. Hewlett confirmed later on in December 2017 that the band planned to release a follow-up album to Humans in 2018, citing a desire to keep the band going rather than take any prolonged breaks as the band had usually done with previous projects. Hewlett described several of the demos and new material as a new direction for the band, stating that he hopes to move the band's artwork in a similar direction. During a performance in Chile on the final leg of the Humans tour, Albarn confirmed that the new album was coming very soon and premiered a new song called Hollywood featuring Jamie Principal and Snoop Dogg. On May 26, 2018, the album was officially announced to be titled The Now Now, being co-produced by James Ford. On 31 May, the music video for the single Humility featuring George Benson, was released alongside Lake Zurich. From 7 to 21 June, the band released the single Sorcerers, Fireflies, and Hollywood. The Now Now was released on June 29, 2018. On 13 September, Trans was released as a single along with a music video. All of the songs from the album have a visualizer except Humility. In the fictional Gorillaz storyline, the band introduced Ace from Cartoon Network's animated series The Powerpuff Girls as a temporary bassist of the band, filling in for the imprisoned Murdoch Nichols, as seen in their Brit Awards acceptance speech for humans. From 4 June to October 26, 2018, the band ran a bi-weekly text adventure ARG called Free Murdoch, in which the player assists Murdoch as he attempts to escape from prison. Murdoch was reunited with the band on 20th of September, in time to join them on the final leg of the Now Now tour. On 25th of October, the band announced they would be partnering with G-Shock to create a line of Gorillaz watches. To promote the watches, the band released a monthly web series called Mission M101. Writers and critics have variously described Gorillaz music as art pop, Alternative rock, hip hop, pop, trip hop, electronica, electronic, dark pop, indie rock, alternative hip hop, rap rock, lo fi, electro pop, dance rock, dub, world, and world beat. The band's aesthetic and general approach has been described as postmodern. According to Pop Matters, the band's early work foreshadowed the melding of hip hop, rock, and electronic elements in pop music that grew in significance in the next decade. In March 2001, Gorillaz played their first show at the Scala in London before embarking on a UK tour later that summer, with one date in Paris and two in Japan. During this tour, the live band played behind a giant projector screen which covered the whole stage, on which was projected various visuals and images created by Hewlett. After taking a short break over the holidays, the tour resumed with a North American leg in February 2002. During one November 5, 2005, Gorillaz played a five-night residency at the Manchester Opera House in Manchester, England. The event was filmed by an Emmy film crew for a DVD release, Demon Days Live, in late March 2006. It was later announced that an American version of the event would take place from 2 to April 6, 2006 at the Apollo Theatre in Harlem, New York. Within an hour of release tickets were sold out. The show of 6 of April was filmed for a live webcast at MSN Video. Palladia, then known as MHD, also broadcast an Apollo Theater show on HDTV on 31 December 2006. In March 2010, Gorillaz began a short six-state tour as rehearsal shows for their headlining slot at the Coachella Valley Music and Arts Festival. The shows were open exclusively to Gorillaz Subdivision fan club members and featured no visuals whatsoever. These performances were the band's first public performances in four years. Gorillaz headlined the final night of the Coachella Festival on April 18, 2010 as their first proper, full show of Phase 3. On 27 April they were the main guests on Later, with Jules Holland on the BBC. In addition, Gorillaz played a two-night residency at London's Camden Roundhouse 29 and April 30, 2010. Mick Jones and Paul Simonon of The Clash performed guitar and bass respectively with the band and more than once in the evening chords from The Clash song Guns of Brixton were heard as a subtle reference to their presence. Gorillaz kicked off their first ever world tour in October 2010, with some preceding festival dates in the summer, such as at the Biblis Festival in Lebanon, the Ruskulla Festival in Denmark, 
the Glastonbury Festival in England and one show at the Citadel of Damascus in Syria. The Escape to Plastic Beach tour took them across North America in October, Europe in November, and finally through Australia, New Zealand, and with one date in Hong Kong in December. During the final show of the tour at the Vector Arena in Auckland, New Zealand on December 21, 2010, Albarn announced that it would be their final show with the Plastic Beach lineup. On July 8, 2017, Gorillaz embarked upon the Humans Tour, the band's second world tour and first since 2010. With 53 scheduled shows and lasting over a year, the tour was Gorillaz's longest tour in their history. On December 6, 2017, Gorillaz announced they would be playing Boomtown Fair as an exclusive one-off uke show. After 53 performances, on March 30, 2018, the band played the final show of the Humans Tour in Sao Paulo, Brazil. On June 1, 2018, Gorillaz embarked the Now Now Tour, in Nuremberg, Germany. On 20 October, Gorillaz played Song 2 by Blur, at Demon Days Festival, with Graham Coxon, in Los Angeles, California. This concert was the penultimate of the Now Now Tour. On 24 October, the Now Now Tour concluded, in Mexico City. The Now Now Tour had participations of the Internet and Little Dragon. Permanent members, current real musicians, former real musicians, virtual BR virtual members, former virtual members, current character voices, former character voices, studio albums. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.